So when people talk about rust in the bulkhead of an R107SL, they normally mean rust in essentially in the bottom of one of the three chambers that make up the top of the scuttle and bulkhead on the car. You've got these two outer chambers here and there, and then you've got the central chamber where the heater blower motor sits. Now, I have to admit, at first I was a bit mystified by exactly what purpose these chambers serve, but just looking at it now with it all opened up, what I think is supposed to happen is that air obviously comes in the top here. It then will flow towards the centre of the car and is presumably sort of sucked in by the blower motor. will then come over the top of this uh, little wall here and if the blower motor were there, it would then be circulating it into the cabin. That would be my uh, understanding of it just on the face of it from having sort of taken it all apart. Now the issue of course is that it's very difficult to let air in without also letting water in and obviously these grills here are in no way shape or form intended to stop water entering the car. Now so Mercedes had to come up with a way of allowing water to exit from the chamber. Now obviously primarily the water is meant to come into the two outer chambers. The central chamber would normally have a cover over it. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a second video, but suffice to say, I think the design assumption around the central chamber that it wouldn't really hold any water was a severely flawed one, but we'll, we'll talk about that another day. Um, with the outer chambers, water was very much intended to enter them, but uh, the problem is, is that the exit points that are designed into the system are quite easily blocked and as a result water and other crud just sits in the chambers and eventually it will attack the bottoms of the chambers to the point where on this one for example there's literally nothing left. You shouldn't be able to see the footwell through this hole but you can and obviously water that comes in through these cavities here is just going to flow straight out and straight down and as a result surprise surprise on this car the outer bits of the uh, floor pan at the front where they meet the bulkhead and the sill are pretty rusty. But essentially when water comes in, what's supposed to happen is it either flows this way towards the center of the car, essentially following the path of the air. It then flows underneath this bit here that you can't see and it then goes into the corner of the chamber, which is there just separated by this little wall. And that hole you can see right in the corner there is supposed to take the water down through a little tube and then out underneath uh, the car. Now that can be tested reasonably well just by taking the cover out, obviously. And I think you can do it with the blower motor in situ, but obviously it's a bit easier to see without it. And you just pour water in there and, and it'll uh, pour away, in theory. The other way is out the other side because obviously water that falls more towards the outside of the car will flow the other way and it'll flow down that slight curve of the chamber there and it's supposed to just fall over the edge uh, there and go down the side of the inner wing. Both exit paths though are very easily blocked by crud and certainly when I took this grill off for the first time I had to stick the hoover in there and I must have hoovered out several pounds worth of just rust and crud and it was all damp and all horrible in there and, and obviously it had been like that for years and it just attacked the bottom of the chamber here to the point where there's just literally nothing left. So that's quite a common, I mean this is quite an extreme example but that's a common way that it manifests itself is essentially water not escaping properly from these, uh, from these two chambers. Now on this car, slightly more unusual, this outer skin of the bulkhead here at the top of the engine bay had also rusted out. And as you can see, I've just cut this bit out um, so that I can kind of see a bit more easily what's going on underneath it. But essentially, I think that must have been caused by um, a bit of crud just lying you know, in the side here and then just kind of eating its way up. What you sometimes see on these cars is, is crud falling off the edge here, draining down into the engine bay and then sitting either underneath the brake booster, which 
is here. Or if you've got a car where the battery sits under the bonnet, which it does on this one, other side, same issue, but it rusts out the bottom of the, uh, of the, the battery tray. Now, I think actually I've been lucky on this one so far as so I think this, this hole here and this of similar hole on the other side is basically stopped, has caught most of the water and allowed it to just to drop straight into the footwell. So these areas down here, touch wood, I think are pretty solid, although I will know a little bit more when I take the, uh, the, uh, the outer wing off uh, in a bit. But that's the basic issue with the outer chambers. Now the problem here is that from a fabrication point of view, it's not necessarily particularly uh, challenging. Um, you know, you've got, you know, just a piece here, which obviously has a slight curve on it, and you've got this piece here. The, the issue though is, is access um, and getting sufficient access so that you can uh, get to the, the bottom of the chambers without damaging either the windscreen or uh, all the sort of wiring and everything like that. So, you know, if you get this job done professionally, they'll probably, they might take the screen out. They, they will almost certainly take the dash out. Um, I mean, on this one, regarding the screen and the dash, the worrying bit really is, is this uh, hole there because you're not supposed to be able to see uh, that, um, that rubber pipe there. And I'm a bit concerned that basically uh, that hole extends will extend so far up towards the screen that you're going to have to take the screen out to uh, to repair it. Um, so at the moment, I'm just kind of planning a strategy. I'm going to have to cut the top of the scuttle off here, I think, in order to get at that. And then I've got to work out how I'm going to sort of butt up the new metal all the way along here and then weld up this section again so it's all sort of tidy again. So wish me luck. <laughs>